He is on your right. Oliver Tomiko on your left. Grixis Death Shadow in Legacy, huh? Mm -hmm. I like it. I like it. There's got to be – so, like, Death Shadow is a busted card. So there's just got to be a good Grixis version of this deck. It is It is a shame that you can't play Probe in the version of this deck. Well, actually, it's probably better that you can't. Probe is so, st it's so, so stupid, that card. It is dumb. Opens on Water and Grave, building on a budget. Yeah. <laughs> Thoughtseize too? Oh yeah. Let's take a look at the grip here. Diabolic Edict, Ponder, Thoughtseize. Looks like a Hymnotorak. Two Thoughtseizes. Scalding Tarn. Andrew J with a pretty nice hand for his Christmas control deck. Yeah. Well, I mean, honestly, the, this hand is a little sketchy on the draw in Legacy because it doesn't do a whole lot for first couple turns. Thoughtseize you. Come on. Draws. A lot worse, but whatever. This hand's to totally acceptable seven card hand, no question. You above keeping thoughts these hands? No, I would. Man, I would, I would not consider mulliganing this. Just there goes Diabolic Edict. Oliver T. He's on six cards. I wouldn't mulligan this hand here. From Andrew Jessup, looks like he picked up uh, Colagon's command. Who's playing modern here? Actually, here's the thoughts these. To Michael with a force of will, a ponder, a preordain, and a wasteland. To Michael gonna get him. Yeah, next turn, cantrip, or if you draw a threat card, cast it plus get him. Teach him a valuable lesson. By the way, I, I think a lot of people that, you know, Complain about the cost of cards in Legacy. If you just played with Watery Graves instead of Rolling Around Seas, you wouldn't even notice. You'd probably be fine. <laughs> you wouldn't be even fine. Wouldn't even notice. Here's a Ponder. Just bring your Death Shadow deck. Be fine. Yeah. Everything is fine. You like if you played Reanimator and you just cut the seas for Graves, how much would it matter? A little Far bit because you, you got Gristlebrand, yeah. but it wouldn't really matter. Wouldn't be the end of the world. Draw a card from Ponder, Will Tomiko. Bang. Mm. Voice landing someone never gets old. No. <laughs> All right, sacrifice the Scalding Tarn. See what comes next here for Andrew J. He'll get a basic island. Wasteland proof now. It's a nice island. What is that? I think that's Japanese fourth edition. All right. But I'm not 100% sure. Here's a ponder. Top three. All right. Jessup will keep him. Pass that turn back over to Oliver. Oliver going to draw. Preordain. We'll scry two here from Tomiko. Thoughts he's among those cards. One on top, one on bottom. And now he'll draw that card. Sacrifice the Scalding Tarn here where Oliver going to fall down to 14. Wouldn't surprise me if he got his other grave here. There it is. Doesn't have Death Shadow yet, but if he draws it, he wants to be well set up. Cycle of Street Wraith. Mm. I'm digging this. Mm. Snuff Out's a nice addition, too. Snuff Out is nice. That is a nice card. Kill Mother of Runes or something like that. Here's Thoughtseize going down to 8. What you got over there? A him, a ponder, a K command, a thought seize, and an underground C. Pick the ponder. His hand's not good, and your hand's not good, so you don't care about the thought seize. 
Yeah. <laughs> there is snuff out from Mercadian Mass. If you control a swamp, you may pay four life instead of paying snuff out's mana cost. Destroy target non-black creature. Can't kill Death's right, Shaman. Not that that's a concern anymore. It can't be regenerated. Thought seized. Take <laughs> yeah, your hand does suck. Take force of will or days. How many uh, how many times, sir, do you do a common that kills a creature at the cost of life, but it's inexpensive on mana, and it kills a creature at the cost of life? Repeat your question. Common. How many times in a com should, you, should you do that at common in a set? Zero. How about two? They did this and what else? Vendetta. Right. <laughs> right. It's like, that's the same card. Yeah. That's the same <laughs> card. My answer would be zero. So you can get zero mana and pay four, or you can pay one and pay, pay one mana and some amount of life, often four. That's, that's the same card. That's the same card. Yeah. You got the right answer. The answer is zero. Thank you. That's correct. Thank you. Very nicely done. Like, we're so looking for applicants. Yeah, I, I, if you're I, interested, you you know. I'm slowly learning. I can work my way into the yeah, game design yeah, world after yeah. after was it six years of coverage with you? I yeah. think I've learned enough. Yeah, zero is the right answer. It's definitely not two. Yeah. <laughs> so Michael will pass the turn back over to Jessup. Jessup will draw. Pass the turn back. Let's go back over to Oliver. Bang! 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 Sorry, Balakita. Got her it. Gonna do it with Spellpierce, probably. Yeah, I, I, he's, I think, thinking about forcing out of respect for Daze, but, you know, Jessup's deck doesn't really look like a Daze deck, and whatever. Keep the force in case you do draw a blue card. Now you have Death Shadow plus force. Yeah. Jess up a lot to think about now because now he's under the gun. He'll sacrifice a fetch. Knows Tomiko's last card is Force Will. Knows that from an earlier discard spell. And now there's a Badlands. I kind of like this. Could say, uh, maybe make you discard with Colgan's command and get something back? Who knows? The, I mean, does he have a. I mean, he's just going to hem him. I guess yeah. he doesn't have anything to get back. Yeah. It, and and there's you can't really shock for value. There's nothing, you know. Yeah, don't shock them. No. Mm. Some good draw steps here. Not bad for Oliver Tomiko. Not bad at all. Looks like Awesome Rossum wins game number one there over Mono Green Tron with Jeskai Control. Ooh, Ooh. Baleful Strix is nice. That's a, that's a good one. I, I don't know if it's going to be enough. He might be under too much pressure here. But that's a that's a way to try to get back into it. That was a nice draw. He's gonna take a, the problem is he's taking a huge hit here, and then he's got to figure out next turn. Yep, you got to block Death Shadow. Okay. Gonna fall down to four. Will Jessup? Jessup will draw. Need something nice here. Yeah. Andrew Jessup, a player who's had a lot of SCG Tour success and is crushing it on Magic Online recently. And I mean crushing it. He has really ded dedicated himself to the game and is getting very, very good at it. Here's Snapcaster. Eh, he'll go with a Ponder. Yeah, he's got a, he's kind of got a Snapcaster. Try to actually pull ahead. That requires a lot of mana. So mm -hmm. a land drop here is nice. And, and, of course, if he finds a removal spell, that's the easiest way to do it. Well, he's looking at three lands. He's going to keep one of them. Play a delta pass the turn back. Can Tomiko find a removal spell to clear the way for the angler? That's the question. Because if Jessup can get to five mana, then you have Colgon's command, get back my Strix, play it. That's great. And if great. you don't have a removal spell for that, now the game's sort of stable. Well, Brainstorm's a pretty good card. That'll resolve. Delver is one. Days is two. I think Street Wraith may have been three. Days is quietly not shabby here because Tomiko knows about the Colgon's command from earlier. And if Jessup's line here is play land number five, Colgon's command, Baleful Strix, Days is good enough to stop that.
Hiya. Obviously blocking. Lethal attack, of course. Getting ready to go back to Andrew J now. I remember Andrew knows the top two cards of his deck because of the Brainstorm. Excuse me, because of the Ponder. Either way, he knows them. And he might be thinking, I need to sacrifice a fetch here, but he won't. All right, now he'll sack after drawing. Down to three. Looks like he's thinking Volcanic Island, but might be going to Underground Sea. I take it all back. It's actually going to be a Badlands. All right, play Delta. Snapcaster Mage. Cycle of Street Wraith. Force of Will, Daze. Okay. So Michael will draw for turn. Attack. Snapcaster do attempt to block. Target in the graveyard. I'm not sure he has anything to recast. Yeah, it would basically just be Brainstorm. I don't think he has a card he can cast. So. Yep. Block. Okay. Follow up here for Oliver. Let's see what this is. Delver? Delver's actually pretty good with just a three. Well, the problem is that now now it's Shock and Ray's dead. It doesn't oh, really yeah, do yeah, yeah. It's actually not that good. But, but it, you know, if he if he holds it in his hand, then it's Ray's dead plus discard. There's no way to work around mm -hmm. it, so. Cake Man looking nice. Yeah, I mean, this is the position that Jessup was trying to grind to over all these turns. Make the land drops, trade off, keep your head above water, and then be able to get the Strix back, block. All right, K Command 2, raise dead. Get back Baleful Strix. Baleful Strix will be the play. Draw a card. Cross your fingers. It doesn't die. Draw. Can't snuff out it. Yep, just a Bloodstained Mire and a passing of the turn. Jessup looking to stabilize. Very much turning the corner here. What is this? Uh-oh. Bounce that attack you. We might be done in just a moment here, folks. Any direct damage there for Tomiko's deck? Nah, he's blue-black. Yep, dead is what he is. As Jace the Mind Sculptor gets the job done, Jessup doing a great job of balancing his resources and hanging on just long enough. Wins game number one there over Oliver Tomiko. Grixis Control up a game here over Grixis Death Shadow in Legacy. Mind you. Take a look at the rest of the scoreboard. Jonathan Rossum up a game here over Joseph Rizziano. That's Jeskai Control up a game here over Mono Green Tron. And it looks like Benjamin Reagan and Gary Troy. They're still battling it out. Grixis mid range versus blue white approach. Now we turn our attention to the sideboards. We'll start with some Michael, who's got two Bitter Blossom, two Abrade, two Power Blast, two Fluster Storm, two Surgical Attraction, two Liliana the Last Hope, a Toxic Deluge, a Diabolic Edict, and the Dark Blast. Wouldn't surprise me if the Dark Blast came in here over some of the other removal spells because Jessup is on Bale Plus Race and Sack Astro Mage. Uh, the real prize here in the sideboard is Bitter Blossom. That card is all sorts of problems for a deck like Grixis Control. Um, can grind out a really long game that way and tax all of Jessup's removal. Some mixture of Liliana, Flusterstorm, Pyro Blast can come in here as well. For Andrew J, three Power Blast, two Surgical Extraction, two Flusterstorm, two Pithing Needle, an Engineer Explosives, a Hydro Blast, a Hymnotorak, a Toxic Deluge of his own, and a Vendillion Click. I would definitely want the Engineer Explosives. Um, you could easily bring in the Pyro Blast if you wanted them to. It's interesting decks by both players. This is kind of nice. The Legacy is so wide open now. Yeah. You know, you, you wouldn't. I don't think you would have saw Grixis Death Shadow before. 
You go no. that low, Death Right Shaman will just kill you. Right. You know, and then for Jessup, just why would you play Grixis Control when you can just play like four color Leovold or something like that? Now you're playing a much more honest deck, and I kind of like what's going on here. So both players playing decks that may not have existed before the banning of Death Right Shaman and Gitaxi Pro. It's good to see. Yeah, no, it, it, I mean, that's, at the end of the day, I think the, the most powerful argument for banning Death Right Shaman is the format had kind of folded into just uh, two or three decks. Yeah. And uh, so far, the early results from our legacy coverage, what's going on at Magic Online, suggest that, at least for the time being, people are, at the minimum, they're trying new stuff. Yeah. Who knows where we'll be in six months, but people are, are uh, engaging with a variety of decks and strategies. Oh. And those are the options there for both players. They'll sideboard shuffle up, get ready here for game number two. But while they're working on that, we're talking about Star City Games Invitational Qualifiers, my friends, where you can win $1,000. At least that's this versus the top eight. Qualifications to our Invitational is at the Berglund Center in Roanoke, Virginia. SEG Tour points, of course, if you're chasing those leaderboard prizes. Top eight playmats, top eight pins, registration tokens, like the two we're going to show you right now. Hello. What up? Patrick Sullivan, legendary creature dragon, Matthias Hunt construct. You finally got one. Yeah, Matthias is just really cool. What's, I think you're. you're I mean, my, my no sweet, slouch. no question. Look uh, at my, that dragon. You're kicking ass sweet. over there. Matthias is just really cool. It's really it, good. his is really cool. Yeah, you can get these tokens exclusively at invitational qualifiers. To learn more, go to starcitygames.com. Slash IQ. You got these for the people if they come by the booth? Did you come stocked with some? I forgot to bring them. Oh, my goodness. Come on. Go to the IQ. <laughs> right. Right. Go to the IQ. Good save. Good save. Good save. Actually, you should purposely not bring them and just yell that at people go who, who ask for one. Go to the IQ. <laughs> go to the, I go to the <laughs> IQ. That's right. You can't get them from Patrick. Go to the IQ. That's perfect selling of that program. Uh, Andrew Jessup, a player who used to grind some IQs, that's for sure for the 22-year-old from the New York area. 13. Long Island. Yeah? Long Island. How do you say that? Uh, Ronkonkoma? Ronkonkoma? I, I don't know. Long Island's all just the same. It's just the same long strip mall and car dealership. They're not, it's not even a, they're not even towns. That's don't nice. Work. It's just, he's on Long Island. Okay. Got yeah. it. Got it. 13, <laughs> 13 top eights, two open wins for Jessup. Top eight of last weekend in Worcester with Danny J uh, by his side. Though, uh, he claims he is the best player in the house, does Andrew. Mm -hmm. uh, played baseball as a competitive outlet until injury turned him to MTG. He's a hip-hop fanatic and claims to be a fairly decent drummer as well. Very, very skilled Magic player. Been tearing up the Magic Online cubes for the better part of a year now. And as a big reason, Mono Green Aggro is everywhere in mm -hmm. Standard. Yeah, just been, been crushing online with that one. He was quick to see Thorn Lieutenant and Vine Mare. And how those new cards from Corset 2019 definitely helped the Mono Green Aggro deck. And he played Mono Green Aggro last weekend for his team on his way to top eight in Worcester. So he practices what he preaches. Yeah, those two cards do a lot to shore up the removal matchups. That's right. Oliver coming on down to 17 via Pluto Delta in a watery grave. Delver of Secrets is how Oliver will start things off. We'll go back over to Andrew now. Andrew will start things off with the beautiful island, and that'll be a ponder. So I'm going to take a look at the top three cards, decide what he wants to do with them. Hint of Torak, Colgan's Command, among those three cards right now for Andrew Jessup. Consult the hand. You'll see a Snapcaster there. It looks like two copies of Brainstorm as well. One thing I've always enjoyed about watching Andrew play Magic, never gets too high, never too low. Very even keel player. Very yeah. methodical in his decision making. Yep. Doesn't give away any information. Two SCG Tour wins thus far in the resume, but I imagine as we look back the look back at this maybe in 2020, 2021, if we're still doing this thing, mm. there'll be more than two. Yeah. I no think question. next to his name. Now we wait. Oh, uh, this happens in the team tournaments. I forget. Jessup likely being consulted on a play or sideboarding. Yeah. He'll, he'll draw from the ponder now. I have a really strict no communication <laughs> yeah, policy. Yeah. <laughs> Should we talk about that before we team in Denver? Yeah. <laughs> Actually, isn't Ben in the middle? The, so yeah. we can't talk to each other anyway? Yeah. 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 Ben's in the middle. Perfect. Perfect. 
I won't even ask you what's going on down there. Yeah. Any any question, any question I'm asked, I will instantly respond with, "This better be serious." <laughs> and then if it is, then I'll help. Okay. All right. Good to know. Good to know. If you ask me anything, I'm just gonna say I'm getting crushed. Sure. That'll be my default response. Oh, I mean, it's not. I'll say that it's not hard to tell, based on your body language. I don't like losing. I do. I do not like how losing. Things are going. It is not enjoyable. Thoughtseize is going to select something here. It looks like Snapcaster Maze. The rest of the hand is pretty redundant. Two brainstorms upon her and a bunch of lands. Steam Vents is untapped. Down to 13 is to Michael. Here's a ponder. Pyroblast, ponder among those cards. That Oliver is taking a look at. Former member of the U.S. national team last year with Jerry Thompson and Reed Duke is Oliver Tomiko. He's got an SD tour window. Under his belt as well in Providence a handful of years ago. As here comes the Delver. That'll be transforming next turn, you have to imagine, as we go back over to Jessup. Colgon's command on top of the deck. This is a Scalding Tarn. That is a Brainstorm. One is a Pyroblast. Two is a Delta. Three. Didn't get a great look at Cormag Angler, I think. There's definitely a black card, and I do believe it is an Angler. The real big fish added to Jessup's hand. I'll be curious to see what he wants to hide away. Do remember, he is playing against a deck that does have discards, so it behooves him to leave some cards on top of his deck, but at the same time, he may want to shuffle some cards away with the fetch land that's in play. For now, we head back over to Oliver to Michael. Trigger, transform, revealing a ponder. Insectile Aberration is now here. Ponder added to Tomiko's hand. And he'll come in here for three with a little oomph. Down to 16 goes Jessup. Cycle of Street Wraith will bring Tomiko down to 11. New card coming. There's that Pyroblast. This is a Death Shadow. Now, Jessup's got some real thinking to do because though that Death Shadow may not be that large right now, it doesn't take much for Tomiko to make it much larger. Well, he's a, he's a little light on ways to combo out here. I mean, the, the street race are the, the biggest mystery that he can have, biggest surprise. But. And we're not going to see anything like Teamer Battle Rage here. No, 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 no. So. There is Pyroblast to go after the Delver of Secrets. We'll see if this resolves. Looks like the answer is no. Flush Storm will take care of that. So we're going to head back over to Andrew Jessup now. He'll untap. It's time for him to draw a card. Keep in mind, he was floating around a Colgon's command. Looks like he actually has it in his hand now. See a couple copies of Brainstorm here, too. So one of the things for Andrew Jessup in his hand right now, he's got a lot of ways to kind of mess around, but he needs to actually, you know, do something. Yeah, same deal as before. I mean, he's, he's going to be under pressure in the other turns of this game. And, you know, he needs to balance getting himself set up and making his land drops and manipulating his draws against keeping his life total high enough to eventually be able to stabilize. Pluto Delta going to find a basic swamp, trying to make himself a little bit wasteland proof here. Here is the Kolagon's command. And the plan here is to deal two to Death Shadow and return Snapcaster Mage. And it works. It's a big win here for Chessup. Yes, it is. Jessup saying, you don't have a street wraith. You wouldn't slow roll me. You'd miss your land drop. You would have cycled it. Exactly. Try to hit your land drop. An attack here for three is going to bring Jessup down to 11. We're all tied up. There's another copy of Death Shadow. The Wasteland will take care of the Badlands. And Tomiko has a Pyroblast at the ready. We'll see a Baleful Strix be drawn. And in a lot of instances, that would be a good draw here for Jessup. But I don't think he can imagine that this would resolve. Either way, it looks like he's going to start with a ponder. This will resolve. Engineer explosives among the cards that Andrew Jess was looking at. That wasteland was really brutal on Jess up here. He's got a lot of good lines, but they involve three mana. We take a look at the bottom shelf of that scoreboard. Benjamin Reagan does win game number one here over Gary Troy. Grixis midrange up a game over blue-white approach. You'd think if a game went that long, it'd be good for blue-white approach, but it appears that's not the case as Reagan did win game number one. 
It looks like Jessup kept it with the ponder. That's a big win over there for Benjamin Reagan, too, because those Grixis decks aren't necessarily the best against blue-white control game when you got creature removal, not a whole lot of counters. Post-board, you often load up in counters and duresses and get much better. Yeah. So taking the first game is a big deal. It's a ponder. One and two and three. Couple of lands in a daze there. Tomiko, very quick shuffle. Not interested in anything that's going on there. Draw a card, Will Tomiko. Sacrifice blue to Delta now. Now that is a Blood Crypt untapped. Really funny mixture of lands in this deck. <laughs> Eight fetches, uh, excuse me, nine fetches, four Ravnica duels, and an Underground Sea. Mm -hmm. Some Wastelands. <laughs> Interesting. Any basics? No. Nice. Nice. Don't even think about bringing a basic to this party. No. E.E. E. Kaboom. And to Michael's hand, I think just a pyro. No pressure. No follow-up pressure right now. Well, he's got to find it. All he can do is pass the turn back. Jessup will draw. Pyroblast the draw there for Jessup. Can't cast it. This is a brainstorm. To Michael will fight over it with a spell pierce. Follow-up. Real big fish. See to Michael's hand just a pyroblast and a C. Not much going on. To Michael will untap and draw. Scalding Tarn's not what the doctor ordered. He'll play it. Pass that turn back. Let's go back over to Jessup. Keep in mind, to Michael, well, he deals a lot of damage to himself, so Jessup doesn't have much work to get done. Right now, it'll just be two attacks. Looks like Jessup may be leading out here with Baleful Strix. Maybe not, though. Yeah, we'll go to the Strix. Pyroblast will take care of that right away. In for five. Knocks Mike go down to three. He needs a good one here. He's just dead to the 5-5. Five five. Draw a card. It's a Delver of Secrets. That's the Scalding Tarn. That's a Diabolic Eve, and we are all done. Andrew Jessup going to win this game and match here over Oliver Tomiko. Two games to zero. His teammates may be down, but this is good news for Andrew because guess what? He's coming around. Yeah, he's ready. He's coming around. Done first. Won his match. That's now right. Time, time to go help your buddies. Yeah. Let's go, boys. I'm ready. I'm ready to help you out. So this should be interesting. He was done first, like you mentioned. Gary, Troy, and Joseph, they're both down a game. And Andrew coming in for reinforcements, part of the fun of team constructed tournaments. Oh boy, look at the look at the technology we have here. There's a good look at Benjamin Reagan. Oh bang. Boom. Gary Troy, technology. That's what I'm talking about. You know we could do that. I haven't been in the booth for a month, yeah. almost a month and a half. Can you believe that? Yeah, it's been a bit since the since the season of invitation. That's the last show I've done. Yeah, and I I didn't work that one. I did the show prior. prior. Yeah, where so were we? June. Louisville. Yeah, Min that Minnesota or Louisville. Those Min were like many. Those yeah. many. I don't remember where I go anymore. Is that bad? No, it's not bad. No, I just don't even know what city I'm in half the time now. Like where? Oh yeah, we're in Philly. I, when's the last? I, I was just thinking about. I couldn't. I couldn't remember the last time I came here. I think it was 2016. I think for. Uh, yeah. I think for an SCG. Yeah, I think I played in that one though. I haven't been here for a while. Andrew's squad is a really good uh, representation of Long Island, by the way. Why is that? No hat. Jets hat hat, but not a Jets hat. If you sample any three random 
uh, adult men on Long Island. Okay. That's the look. One third ha- do not have a hat. One third have a Jets hat, and the other third have a hat that's not a Jets hat. You would know it's perfect. Better. You would know better than me. It's a man. Perfect. If you did a census of Long Island, that, was that would one be it. That, that will we'll come back. It's come. the perfect sample. Never been. Wouldn't know. Somehow New New York's still one of the cities I haven't been to before. So. You haven't been to New York? That is no. Wow. Okay. There's no Magic tournaments there, mm. so I've never been. Fair enough. Search for Escanta, I believe. It could be. No. That's the blood fast. That's worse, actually. That may arguably be worse. I've been to the airport a couple times. Which airport? JFK or Newark? Uh, I've been to LaGuardia at least twice. And then JFK. JFK is the big one, right? JF, I mean, they're both big. JFK is huge. I, JF, yeah, I've been to JFK multiple times, too, just like flying overseas or something. Or coming back from an SCG, like when we do Boston, I might fly to New York and then over back to Seattle. But I've never actually walked around New York before. Brooklyn, Long Island, none of it. Yeah. Everyone says it's amazing. It's not really. That's what I wanted it's to hear. whatever. That's what I wanted to hear. How good could it be? It looks like our modern match is going to go to game number three here in just a moment as Joseph tied things up against Rossum Rossum. For now, Gary Troy is going to keep it in some land drops. A couple of memorials, an island, and a field of ruin against Ben Reagan, who's got a mountain, an island, and a fetid pools. And if Reagan's, you know, thinking this hard, suggests that Mrs. Landrops is debating about activating on the main phase and risking discarding a hand's eyes and tapping low versus just say go and maybe missing this turn's land drop. Mm-hmm. Now, of course, Fetid Pools and company. Great mana so far here for Ben. It's just the it's the quantity that's the problem, not yep. the quality. But I think he might be incentivized to pay here. Now, he could go to Champion of Wits. But he also might not want to tap out as yeah. part of this, too. The fear he has as he discards a Glimmer is if I tap out, you just drop it to Fairy and we could be done. Right. Even though you don't even have white mana right now, that's a thing that could happen. Big well, big yeah, I mean, uh, also he could have just Field of Ruin and gotten the planes too. True, true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he essentially had white mana available though on the previous turn. Yeah. Here's an activation of Argyle's Blood Fash. Draw and draw. There's a land. Hub getting energy. See what the follow-up is now. Looks like it might be Glint Sleeve Siphoner. Yep. Does this resolve? We had Essence scattered that looks to take care of that. You know I'm a Jets fan? Pardon? You know I'm a Jets fan? I did not know that. Yeah. Not my second favorite team behind. Well, assuming I would ever watch a football game again, which is unlikely. Um, it's Browns than Jets. Okay. Well, just lovable losers. I guess the Jets would sort of be my number two team also. I was a big Vinny Testaverde and Boomer Esiason guy. Uh, who isn't <laughs> Vinny Testaverde could really throw the football. He really could. Throw it hard. Yeah. Big arm. He, Vinny Testaverde had a big arm. Yeah. That's why they never loved Chad Pennington. <laughs> I liked I liked Chad Pennington, too. That's why they didn't love him, because they knew Vinny had a big arm. Yeah. Chad Pennington just never made mistakes. He was really good. But he just didn't have an arm. He didn't no, have he didn't Vinny's ha- arm. He didn't have that didn't arm. Didn't have Vinny's arm. That rocket cannon. Right. Vinny couldn't aim it, but he could throw it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I love the I love the Jets. Curtis Martin, Wayne Krebet, Keyshawn the Johnson. Just Sean, give he, him the ball. Keyshawn Johnson was great. Yeah, that's right. Dirty Mark Sanchez. You know how a lot of Lakers fans are like, oh, I'm, I'm sort of, they're like sort of positively sympathetic towards the Clippers, but it's not really a rivalry because the Lakers have all these titles and they, the yeah, and the Clippers, Clippers have nothing, up. right? Yeah, that's how I, that's how I am about Giants Jets. It's like I'm, if they're in the playoffs, like if the Jets make the playoffs, it's like cool. I hope they win. But. Sure, but the Giants have all the stuff and the Jets have none of the stuff. Yeah, I'm, yeah, yeah. Hope you're ready for another miserable Eli season. Dial that in. I don't know. I'm okay with it. 
He's like 36, man. I know. It's his last year. It's fine. <laughs> Looks like a search for Escanta here for Gary Troy. You know what? We all have our last years. <laughs> <laughs> you can't. You cannot avoid it. It's true. It's true. Looks like a negate's going to go after that search. Andrew says, eh, don't fight over it. Let's go back over to Benjamin Reagan. You know what Sanders is not short on? Jame Day Tomes. That's <laughs> a lot of Jame Day Tomes. A lot of ways to draw cards. Like, like permanence that draw a card? Blood fast. Uh, search for his Kanta. Literally every planeswalker. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they do all draw cards. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All of them draw cards. In slightly different ways, but it's all yes. the same. It's all the same thing. They're all card advantage machines. There's an island. Pass the turn back. All right. <laughs> Pay two, draw a card. Pay two more, draw a card. How about one more time, Ben? What do you say? Oh, yeah. Maybe. He's at eight right now. Maybe ten. We'll confirm it. It is ten. Can't stop, won't stop, question mark. He'll stop for now. Back over to Ben we go. That's a champion of wits. Draw two. And discard two. Champion of Wits among the cards placed into the graveyard. And now we head back over to Gary Troy, who's drawn a planes. But Gary hasn't really gotten off the ground at all this game. Searcher has contact got countered. Haven't really seen him resolve anything like a glimmer of genius. Well, Reagan's plan is kind of perfect here. Get a card advantage engine underneath all the action. Draw some cards. Be able to leave up mana to counter stuff. If you don't do anything, gas up. And now... He has enough mana where he can start deploying a little bit of pressure while leaving up counterspell mana and leaving himself the leftovers to dump into blood fast if Troy doesn't do anything that requires a counterspell. Oh, we're trying to get aggressive. History of Benalia, huh? Okay. Did not expect that. Yeah. Is this even a card in this spot? Well, Ben feels like it is, so he's going to cast Negate. Maybe we'll see a fight over this? Gary Troy has been so patient, especially with Andrew Jessup over his shoulder. I think from Reagan's perspective, if it's even close... Reagan has a perspective just to cast stuff because his hand's a little jammed up. It's a little bit better to, you know, draw two cards and trade off with an opposing card rather than draw three. So if he thinks it's close, definitely worth countering given how many cards he's been looking at. And Jace's defeat going to go after the negates. So Gary able to get a couple of cards out of Reagan's hand, but more importantly for Ben, the coast is very clear. And Gary with just a single blue mana available, nothing to really fear if you're Ben. He's going to start by attacking here for two. Troy's going to fall down to 18. Let's see what the follow-up is here for Reagan. Drawn Catacombs where he'll start. I believe that's a Nickel Bolus. Yes, it is. There'll be a trigger. Make him discard. I think the follow-up is going to be Doomfall. Make you discard again. It's been Guess a not. dominant game from Reagan so far. Once he found the land drops, yeah. I mean, Bloodfast is just a lot to handle. 
Right. It really is. You, you would think that paying two life for one card is a lot, but we saw in previous standard with a card like Erebus, it's fine. For some matchups, yeah. I mean, yeah. And, and even in the matchups where that kind of effect is bad, as we saw earlier, uh, if your deck is set up the right way, the back half, the land, can can get you back in. Yeah. But in this kind of matchup, assuming that your your deck has enough cheap interaction and the right kind of interaction, the right counter spells, the right sort of discard, whatever, a control deck just gets buried by this. Mm -hmm. The only hope that they have is that you just don't have cards that line up the right way. And Reagan's sideboard, obviously, is, is, is Supreme Will here. It, he's had a lot of cheap, good cards to pair with the Bloodfast, and that is very challenging for a control deck to beat. Well, now, if you're Reagan, you know, you're at 10. You're sitting in pretty life total wise. You're not any, any pressure. Attacking is easy. So you'll come in here for 6, knock Troy down at 12, play a land. You can just transform Nicol Bolas if you really want to now. Yep. Not really sure there's much to really be concerned about. Make sure you tap your mana right, obviously. But you say, I'm going to transform this into Nicol Bolas the Arisen, and this could just be game all by itself because, heck, you got to get that thing off the battlefield. Good luck. And now you're also spread. Uh, what I really like about Reagan's position here is you're really spread on card types that are relevant, yep. and that insulates you from any sort of sweeper. You have an enchantment then that's meaningful, creature on the battlefield, uh, creature in your graveyard that matters. Now you have a planeswalker. So uh, it's really hard for one sweeper to undo all this work. Yeah, with Nicol Bolas now on the battlefield, that's probably going to be too much for Gary Troy to beat. Gary Troy, like I mentioned, he just never really got anything going this game. Sure, he just picked up a copy of Teferi. Teferi is much too late for this game, as good as the hero of Dominaria is. Might be coming down to our middle match now. There's five mana. Teferi. Looks like that's going to resolve. I think you probably have to tuck away Nicol Bolas. Yeah, I, I don't know what else you would do here. Well, interesting. I think Gary Troy also has a copy of Seal Away in hand, and if that's the case, you seal away that Champion of Wits right now. That'll resolve. And, okay, you're Teferi. You'll, you might be able to get to use next turn. Looks like Reagan's going to pay two life to draw a card, going to fall down to eight. The nice thing here for Ben is that he can get back to the Nicol Bolas very, very quickly. Yeah, I mean, he can do it right now. Mm -hmm. Peel and cast. Down to six. Here's this. Make you discard your last card. Kiss that disallow goodbye. There's a land. What's the follow-up here? Oh, Vraska's Contempt. Okay. The casual perfects. Yeah. <laughs> well, he's seen so many darn cards. Oh, no, think, I'm not. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah. Think you, you think you'd have it. I'm not saying that Reagan's getting lucky here. No. Just, no. No, he is not. Tough road to hoe here for Gary Troy. Nicol Bolas, either form, going to be difficult for Gary Troy to beat. Just going to play a land, I think, and pass the turn back. Getting ready to crack memorials, I'm sure. And for now, Ben Reagan's going to untap and draw. Remember, he's got a champion of wits in the graveyard. Bloodfast and Nicol Bolas in the battlefield. And a whole bunch of cards in hand. This, this will be an attack for four. It's eight all, tie game. Anyone's game. Tie game. Advantage bar, even. <laughs> Five mana. Hmm, Scarab God. It's a good magic card. Advantage bar. Yeah. <laughs> we'll keep moving. It's slightly going Ben's way. Moving it Ben's way. Memorial, back Bang. Gary's way. Back Gary's way now goes the bar. Troy will draw. That'll be a planes. 
I'm just not sure what Gary can draw in a spot like this, honestly. I need so much to overcome. Sweeper plus exile everything. But that's yeah. some I don't know. It could be cleansing Nova, destroy all creatures, so I can get that bingo square. Yeah. Think yeah. about that. History of Benalia, I promise that's not it. That, that resolves. Nice. Yeah. That's nice. Yeah. A little late. And now there's a walking ballista. So the aggressive game plan that Gary Troy tried to work himself into after sideboard, all those cards just came much too late. As here is Scarab God returning a champion of wits. Spencer Mary will draw four. Discard a couple of cards here in just a moment. Now he'll untap. Scarab God Trigger will go on the stack. A little life loss and scry action. Of course, you can respond to the trigger if you'd like, if you're Benjamin Reagan. Show you a couple copies of Raska's Contempt and get this game over with. As Ben Reagan's going to win this game and match here over Gary Troy, two games to zero. Grixis Midrange going to take care of Blue White Approach. And that means we got to turn our attention to Modern, where it looks like Awesome Rossum and Joe R are still playing. Yep, in game number three here. And well, that's interesting because if they're still playing, I'm curious what's going on. So we'll throw there and zoom on in. We'll get our life totals updated when we have a moment. We want to make sure we get the action here. Both players with a bunch of lands on the battlefield. Joe has Tron. Rossum is trying to overcome that. Sitting on Logic Knot has his one counter spell. And Joe sitting with an Urza's Mind in hand. You might see an Electrolyze here from, from Rossum. He's going to start by sacrificing a Scalding Tarn, getting himself an island. Maybe he has some interest in firing up Colonnade. Goal, of course, when you're in a situation like this against Tron is get the game over with. Yep. It looks like it. Yeah, start with Electrolyze. So he has enough stuff in his graveyard where he can conceivably logic not even through uh, Richiliano's uh, Tron and all his mana. Should something large emerge. There's an expedition map. Now one thing it looks like Rossum does not have is the Celestial Colony, but he does have Jace. And Jace will allow Rossum to draw three. Logic Knot is one. Didn't get a great look at the second one. Here comes the third one. And of course, Rossum will have to put two cards back. Traditionally a difficult matchup here for Jeskai Control. But it looks like Rossum's doing okay right now. Time is an issue, though. Rossum here, what, what appears to be a pretty commanding position, but... You see the clock ticking down here, and you got to get the game over within time. Definitely starting to work itself into the equation. About two minutes and change left here for these two players as Rossum puts some cards back. Vendillion click in the draw step. Yes! You already got spell cast in the draw step. Dang it! Terminus, man. Yeah, You're right. Way to be on the ball, though. You're right. Thanks a lot, man. And Dylan Click looks like it may have taken a thought knot, Sear. No, I think. I just said you can keep it. Yeah. Let's take a look. What you got over there, man? Looks like a path to exile with this on the stack. Kiss that goodbye. Search for his Kanta. Logic knot. I mean, I assume here that you want to take Logic Knot and hope you can just haymaker him with the top of your deck. Yeah, I hope you peel out. I think that's a probably a pretty good idea. All right, I'm going to do the old Ulamog check here. Go to the tape. Yeah, best card to draw. Two. Oh, Stone's not bad either, but I think Ulamog's the best of the bunch. Especially if there's a Sanctum of Ugin to find. You can crack and find with that map. Start to chain off a little bit here. There is one Sanctum of Ugin. All right, back to John. Brainstorm. I think he may have found a Cryptic Command in there. Mm. 
All right, put those two cards back. In for three, bring it down to six. Colonnade, not bad. Crack the map. Looks like not yet. No, I think he wants to save that because if if he cracks the map, then uh, Rossum can start fade sealing. Well, I, I get why he hasn't cracked it yet, uh, but he's facing lethal now. Right, now he's got to thin yeah, out. So now he's got to thin out, yeah. yeah. Get Sanctum of Ugin and hope for the best. The best draw here, to my knowledge, is Crypt is uh, is Ulamog targeting Vendillion Click and Colonnade. Grenade. Keep yourself alive. Or in turns, top of deck. Okay, he did that on the end step. Draw a card. Uh, if Rossum has Cryptic, just, I would counter this. Yeah, Cryptic. I would, I would Cryptic yeah. that. Because I know your other card, and we should be done now. Yeah, you don't want to fight with the Eldrazi triggers That's against right. the counter spells. So. Jonathan Rossum going to win this game and match for his team.